Welcome to the Healing Garden. Um, my name is Raul Tibis. Uh, I'm an MD PhD by training and um, I work at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Um, I'm working in the capacity, um, I'm an associate, senior associate uh, consultant. Um, I'm also assistant professor of medicine at the, uh, at the College of Medicine um, at the Mayo Clinic and I am the um, associate director for the acute and chronic leukemia program. So, um, the project I will talk about it today um, was awarded with an American Society of Clinical Oncology Career Development Award or an ASCO CDA. And so, one of the um, big challenges in therapy for all cancers, but especially for acute leukemias, is that we haven't really changed therapies for decades now. We have understood and learned a lot about molecular biology and a scientific understanding of leukemias, yet the treatment of acute leukemias, and specifically acute myeloid leukemias, or AML, has lagged behind. One of the most active drugs in acute leukemias is actually site therapy. Um, it's given to patients alone or in combinations frequently. Um, this is an effective medication and drug, but uh, by itself often is not potent enough, or specifically in patients that have unfortunately relapsed or whose leukemia has come back, that medication needs, we need to enhance, we need to incorporate cytarabine into um, treatment regimen, but we need to make it stronger and more potent. We have performed a large-scale RNAi screen, knocking down 572 genes of the human genome uh, specifically 572 kinases. Kinases are genes that drive growth essentially. So the first innovation is that we were able to develop such a new assay in technology. Uh, we didn't invent the RNAi, but we were the first one to adapt it um, and scale it up to leukemia research and then discovery leading to new therapies. So we found only a, few hand, a, few, a handful of few genes that very strongly enhanced the activity of cytherapy. Then we went um, and looked for agents or drugs, early drugs that are already out there in development that we could take already and combine it with that medication for cytherapy. There were one or two of those medications out there and the most uh, specific drug or the most, the gene that had the biggest effect together with cytherapy is called V1 kinase. That is a kinase that allows cancer cells to essentially stop, arrest, and repair themselves. So that gene, V1 kinase, if we inhibit that, meaning taking out the activity completely, by various methods in the lab, we found that we get a profound and very strong sensitization, essentially a potentiation of the activity of RSC, which is cytherapy. Um, in some of the cell lines in the lab up to a hundred fold. And then we also now took a medication, a new inhibitor, a small molecule inhibitor that is not approved by the FDA, but that is in early clinical development. So we took that inhibitors and we brought it together into the test tube, into the laboratory with cytherapy. And we also took cells from leukemia patients and found that the cells from leukemia patients grown in the lab for a week or so we're also very strongly sensitized to the combination of cytarabine plus that experimental V1 inhibitor. So that V1 inhibitor, it's called MK1775, it's safe enough to be given to patients already because we have used it already, and myself I was involved, in a clinical trial for patients with solid cancers, but not or never with leukemias. We have proposed and suggested a clinical trial and to move forward to translate our findings from the laboratory rapidly and effectively into a novel combination of cytarabine and the V1 inhibitor called MK1775 into a clinical trial for patients with advanced and refractory acute but as well as advanced chronic leukemias. So the ASCO Career Development Award and the whole project is a combination of the extension of the laboratory works we have performed, extending because we're trying to understand which eventually may be the patients that respond better, and the other part of the project of that ASCO CDA is also 
the clinical trial, the implementation of the clinical trial, the conduct of the clinical trial at our centers, possibly with other centers together as well. So it's a translational research project where we brought discoveries from the laboratory in a fast way, in a very, in a way, a very pragmatic and fast way, trying to develop, not only trying, but developing new combination therapies that we can move forward rapidly into the clinic that hopefully will benefit patients with acute myeloid leukemias, AML, but also other patients with advanced leukemias, ALL, um, patients that have MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome, that have become more aggressive. And um, so our goal and the goal of my laboratory and our translational pro program and project here at the Mayo Clinic is to improve patient care through translational research. With the development of the project, I think we have made um, uh, a great advance and um, I'm very excited to see how, um, how it will work in the clinic. Of course, if something is discovered in the laboratory, there's no guarantee that it will work. But we have done a lot of experiments that we feel confident that we want to move forward into the clinic um, and hopefully benefit our patients. Um, the project is ongoing for a year and a half or two years. And um, <clears throat> so what, what we have done so far, we have written an initial clinical trials concept as well as a clinical trial protocol. So we have an idea, and I have written that, so we know what we want to test, how we want to test it, and what patients we want to test it. So with this one, now we approaching um, two ways we're going we, we're working with a company who makes that experimental drug. It's important to work with those companies. And at the same time, we're pursuing it through the National Cancer Institute. as a program where early experimental agents that are safe enough to be given to patients are made accessible for investigators. And um, we're working with the NCI and starting to work um, with the National Cancer Institute to get that medication under a very well-defined clinical trials protocol plan and put it together with therapy. So the project is all set up. Um, we'll be pursuing that in the next couple of months. And um, in terms of when it will open, and uh, there will still be a couple of steps and processes in between. Of course, it can't be fast enough, not only for us, but also for our patients. If I could do it, I would open it tomorrow, just like this. But we need to follow certain safety guidelines and ethics guidelines and approval. So it is a process, but that process has started. We're making good progress and um, we're working hard on that to get it as soon as possible to our patients. Um, Mayo Clinic is also, we're also a very patient-oriented translational research program. There are other centers, excellent centers across the country and across the world who are doing similar approaches. Um, not the same approach as we are taking because we discovered that as a sensitizer. I know that other laboratories are also interested in similar targets and in similar um, concepts. But I think we are um, very much at the leading edge. And my ultimate goal for patients is, I want to cure everybody. Um, we have to be realistic that, that, um, that is a high task and we may not be able to fulfill that. If we can improve the responses for our patients at an acceptable toxicity profile, meaning a side effect profile, meaning we get good anti-leukemia activity with a good quality of life without too many side effects for the patients, I think we have achieved our goal.